also an artist um, dealing with performance art and electronic music mostly. So, you know, so quite often I'll think about how these things fit together, if at all. And a little while ago I started thinking about um, the idea of perceptual augmentation, you know, expanding your senses, finding new sensory modalities, that kind of thing. And, um, and also on the other hand, so that's sort of a cognitive science kind of a question, but then on the other hand the question of um, what a truly transhumanist art might be if there, if there is such a thing. Uh, um, and there's really no knowing. Now, I'll just, before we, before we get in here, I'll just say a couple of quick things. Um, a little vague with some references and details. That's because there's actually uh, three blog posts on the Humanity Plus UK website that I've uh, got a lot more detail in it. So if you want references or more detail, that's the most common one. And uh, the other thing is that this, um, this title's basically a bit of a lie. I've changed my mind this time, it's gotten biased. And I started out thinking it was sort of a bit of a philosophical ramble through the idea of augmented perception that would wind up with some concrete thinking about art. But this philosophy uh, sort of got a life of its own after a while. And, uh, and the art, well, you know, we're stuck in the real world at the moment, and the things are um, things where we're not in the world of transhumanist art yet, so there's not really a lot to talk about. So, what I'm going to do is start out by talking about a few thoughts I had about art and what might make a transhumanist art art, and then take you off through some philosophy. In the middle, you're going to think, where on earth is this guy going with this? It starts to get a little bit out there, and then we'll sort of bring it back around and time permitting. So, so, the possibility of a truly transhumanist art. So this is not an uh, um, art with images of possible transhuman futures or whatever, but something that really uh, distinguishes this as a new field of art. Um, one possibility, and this is only one of many, and I'm not going to try and be exhaustive, but is the possibility that we're talking about art that only, a trans, uh, only transhumans could make or appreciate. There's something about the very nature of being modified that creates a separate experience. And uh, the kind of thing that I'm, I'm thinking of generally when I think about this kind of thing is unlocative art is um, a kind of art form that's appearing quite a bit at the minute because where you've got um, GPS and similar systems being used to create uh, basically augmented reality tableaus. So you go to a real, a real place in the real world, but then when you look at that, that place uh, through um, through a webcam, something like that, you'll see extra elements of the scene. There'll be aspects to the scene that, that you wouldn't have been aware of otherwise. And this, uh, I started thinking about this and thinking, you know, this is basically, if you think of the webcam, the computer system you're using, as an extension of yourself, um, then you're getting something out of the scene that, that, a, that a technology free human wouldn't be capable of perceiving. And so, so anyway, that's sort of roughly where I was thinking about this. The, the perception seemed pretty important. You know, it's, it's an old idea that art and perception go hand in hand and there's something really, um, you know, something really intimate about the relationship between the two. So, of course, there's going to be a, a similarly intimate relationship between augmented perception and a transhumanist art. So, um, so, perhaps the essential feature of transhumanist art would be that it requires or encourages augmented perception. Now, so this is about the point where where my title being a bit of a lie and that I, I'm not actually going to focus on art much. I might touch on it again at the end, but really I got to thinking about augmented perception. What does that mean? Uh, what, what kind of things we're talking about here? And once you start to think about augmented perception uh, and its philosophical implications, it, it takes you to some strange places. So, so sexual augmentation. <laughs> So um, I'm guessing that if you didn't know at the start of the day, people, um, people here know what transhumanism is now. You probably did when you walked in. The only reason I'm bringing up the definition of transhumanism is just to, just to emphasise this part of the end, where we're talking about enhancing human intellectual, physical or psychological capacities. So it's, um, you know, we've, we've, because there have been implicit definitions of transhumanism in various talks we've had today, um, where the enhancement you're, uh, you're offered is some great insight on just getting to stay alive. Um, and in our case, it's about being able to perceive the world in richer, deeper, wider ways. So, 
The sexual enhancement. It sounds, uh, I can imagine if you don't think about this kind of thing very much, it might sound like a pretty airy fairy thing. You know, I can have a 20 foot high robot body, why do I really care about sexual enhancement? Well, it's actually, um, in terms of pragmatic transhumanism, it's, it's a particularly tractable form of augmentation. Um, sorry, I don't know if you could hear me before or around. Um, okay. Um, so, it's a particularly tractable form of augmentation for a couple of reasons. One is that when you're looking at uh, neuroscience and brain mapping research, sensory areas of the brain tend to be better understood than sort of deeper, deeper areas or uh, general neocortex um, areas. If, when we're looking at uh, parts of the brain that handle visual image processing, um, they're, they're just generally a little better understood. And also, there's been work with uh, actual prosthetics, such as, um, well, we'll get to them in a moment, but artificial retinas and cochlear implants, that kind of thing. So, there are a couple of questions we can think about. So, with perceptual enhancement, what would that involve? Well, it can be quite hard to think about, because for a start, we tend to think of perceptual augmentation in terms of the familiar human senses we've got right now. When actually, perception is really just simply a case of processing information coming in about the world. And there is no reason in principle why uh, a full array of trans or post-human senses would have to uh, conform to the same kind of, uh, the same forms that you have now, your, your five familiar senses. And there's another thing about your five senses that, uh, that is necessarily invisible to you, and that's their limits. See, it's, I mean, quite obviously, the things you can't perceive, you don't think about them because you can't perceive them a lot of the time. You have to use your, it seems like, a, it sounds like a trivial idea, but the thing is, you, people don't have a tendency to think about all the stuff that could be out there that they're simply incapable of perceiving. Or the things that they do perceive in one way that maybe you could be perceiving in different ways. So, to, Take this into a slightly more pragmatic place. We already have machines which, like certain animals, can, can interpret signals that are beyond human perception ones. So we, we, you know, these are pretty uh, common things to us now in, um, in, the, in the 21st century. You, know, you have uh, images from outer space, you've got X-ray machines, you, you name it. These are, they're showing you images that you wouldn't, uh, and I'm, I'm sticking with vision generally because it's, it's just a they're showing you images that you wouldn't have been able to perceive um, without technological help. And so, imagine that you're not using uh, your cochlear, you know, we're starting slow, but imagine you're not using your cochlear implants and your artificial retina to hear and see things uh, that a normal human would see, but to see and hear anything that a machine, any information that a machine can feed you properly process. So, um, now, these are, now we'll start out with a couple of sort of fairly standard science fiction tropes. You could have things like, so you say you've got artificial retinas, cochlear implants, you could have improved night vision, like for example you can just flip into an infrared mode, um, thermal imaging, ultraviolet vision. Now, these are all things that are absolutely tractable given the technology we've got now. This is not particularly amazing stuff, except that we don't get people wandering around with, uh, well, for a start, artificial retinas and cochlear implants haven't gone far enough yet, but once you get up to the point where you've got human level perception with these artificial solutions, it really wouldn't be a big deal to just start seeing ultraviolet frequencies if you wanted to, that kind of thing. Also, you can have false colour imaging, so that's where you, you're taking, you're, you're mapping image, uh, colours arbitrarily onto different features in a scene in order to make particular features stand out, and the features you're looking for can be pretty much anything you want. And also you can have cross-modal perception, so um, you know you can see sounds, uh, smell a visual scene, that kind of thing. And of course, it, suddenly it gets back to false colour imaging. You've got all sorts of creative interpretations of the input going on. So this, if you start to take these ideas seriously and move beyond a few sort of standard science fiction tropes, you start to get into a situation where you're not talking about sort of like a, a drug type situation. Um, where it's all quite freewheeling and you haven't got a lot of control over the parameters of your sensory experience. It could be a new era of uh, particularly precise control over sensory. So you're able to flip between different modes and control 
how you're seeing things, how you're hearing things, how you feel things. And 